So the pitch section is where we get involved in some really cool sounding stuff. The pitch section is located here to the left of the volume and panning section. The first control is the transpose. So if I play the sound and bring up the transpose, it's going to change the pitch of the sound. If I bring it down, it's going to bring the sound lower. So with the transposition, this is in semitones. If I bring it to 12 semitones, then it means it's one octave above. And if I bring it to 24, it means it's two octaves above. And I can go all the way up to four octaves above, which is really, really high. I can also bring it down to a negative. So negative 24 is minus two octaves. That's pretty low. You can hear that it's also slowing down the sound. So it's not warped like a lot of the other stuff in Ableton. It's actually changing the pitch, but it's not keeping the speed constant. So that's something to note. Now this note here, it's a C3. It says it's C3, which is the root note. But I happen to know that this note that I brought in is actually an A2. So if I wanted this note to be laid across the keyboard properly, I would bring this transposition up 15 semitones. So it transposes the A2 into a C3. So now when I play on the keyboard, I'm actually playing the proper notes. And so I can play in key if I needed to play something tonal. So I'm going to leave the transposition here at 15. And now the next section down here is the detune. This is in cents. And there's 100 cents per semitone. So this is a very fine tuner. Let's hear what happens if I bring this up very slowly. So I can bring this up or down 50 cents, which is equal to 100 cents is equal to one semitone. So it's very, very fine. And it's very, very slight versus the semitone, which is a, a more of a coarse tuner. Now the LFO section here is again governed by the LFO. So we're gonna discuss that in the LFO video. And the envelope section here is governed by the pitch envelope attack, decay, sustain, release. So in order to put this to use, we will have to turn that on. And then the glide section here, we've got portamento and glide, which are similar but kind of different. So we'll discuss the differences in those. In this clip, I have two notes, and you can see that they're overlapping. This is what they sound like. This is without any sort of glide, portamento glide. Now, if I change the glide to portamento and change the time here, bring it this down a little bit, let's hear what it sounds like. So you can hear it's kind of sliding to the next note. Now, if I bring the time a little bit up, so you can hear it takes a little bit longer for it to slide to the next note. And if I bring it way up, it takes a long time to slide to the next note. So that note isn't even long enough because it takes 10 seconds to slide to the next note. So if I extend this note a little bit, then we can hear the whole way that it takes. So Basically, the portamento is for polyphonic sounds. Now, the glide is a little bit different, so let's go ahead and bring the time down. So it's a little bit smoother because it doesn't include the original note in the second note after it transitions over. And if I bring the time up, it just smoothly moves to the next note and it doesn't include any of the first note there. Now the spread, it creates a detuned sound or a detuned voice per note. So you hear it sounds a little bit fuller when I bring the spread up. So this creates more of a strain on your CPU, but it creates a little bit of a coursing effect too. So this is more of an effect than anything.